root pressure. So what is this root pressure actually? Now if we cut off the shoot of a plant, the water pushes out from the root stem. And this is due to root pressure. All might have experienced this one. So what happens? Root pressure is built up due to cell to cell osmosis in the root tissue. Which you can clearly see in figure 4.13 and figure 4.14. Now, as one turgid cell presses the next cell, just imagine one cell which is turgid presses the next cell. So, the force of the flow of water increases inward. And when this water reaches the xylem vessel, it enters the pores of the thick walls with considerable force. Thus, the root pressure is one of the forces to raise water up through the stem into the leaves. But these force alone cannot push water up to the top of a tall tree. Some extra force or energy is also required to take the water to the top level if the tree is a tall tree. And that you will read about in section 4.7. Everyone to see figure 4.13 present in page number 47. See that is a cross section of a part of a root which shows the cell to cell conduction of water from a root hair to xylem. You can see a extension of root hair which is also uh, already labeled that root hair through which water enters. Did you see the pathway of water entering with the red color arrows? It shows how the water is entering through the from cell to cell and reaches till the first it comes to the through the root hair goes to the part uh, in the cortex then comes to the phloem then to the xylem till like that it goes on reaching to the whole plant. Now, what is guttation? In certain plants like tomato, grass, banana or ferns, the root pressure is high enough to force the water all the way through the stem and comes out through the ends of leaf veins. And this you can even uh, uh, would have seen in the winter mornings droplets of water seen in the edges of the leaves early in the morning that is nothing but due to gutation. This appears as a tiny drops along the margin or the tips of the leaves that is called gutation and especially in the early morning it is clearly visible. This loss of excessive water is called as gutation and about more about gutation we will study in the next class when we will study about transpiration. Progress checks, please try to do it. Importance of root hairs and the upward movement of absorbed water and minerals. Now absorption of water by roots is by the means of root hairs already we have seen before. A root hair contains cell sap which has a higher concentration of salts as compared to the outside soil water. And this different sets of osmosis and the outside water which diffuses into the root hair. And from the cell bearing root hair, water continues to pass through the adjoining cells one after the another. And finally, it enters the xylem vessel. So that is all is already clear in page number 48 and uh, figure number 4.13 and 4.14. So the turgidity acquired by the cells in the process also helps to push the water upwards through the xylem vessel. What does that mean? This, uh, this uh, xylem vessel which is there, this water is taken up with the help of root hairs with a pressure exerted by the cell sap and thus it reaches upwards through the xylem vessel which is situated at the center of the plant. Now absorption of mineral elements. Absorption of mineral elements from the soil involves active transport by the cells and minerals may be also absorbed as ions rather than as salts. So it is said that the minerals which are absorbed by the plant which moves through the root hair reaches to the xylem is in the form of ions so this dilute solution of water and mineral salts which are absorbed from the soil by the roots 
can be used for the manufacture of food in the leaves during the process of photosynthesis and only if it can travel up to the highest point of plant only otherwise no this upward flow occurs through the xylem now let us see some experiments on absorption and conduction of water in the plants so our first experiment is to show that roots absorb water so for that we need to take a test tube named as a filled with only water and pull out a young leafy plant such as a balsam plant from the soil with its roots intact now inside the root sorry insert the roots into the test tube soon and put a few drops of oil in the test tube so that it will prevent the loss of water due to evaporation now mark the level of the water and set up a similar test tube b but the thing is that here we should not take any plant or the setup should be without a plant now in a day or two you will find that the level of water in test tube a falls but not in the test tube b and this proves that water is lost in test tube a and was absorbed by the roots Our second experiment is to show that water is conducted upwards through the xylem now this experiment will show you how water is conducted upward through the vessel called the xylem for that you need to take a medium size young balsam plant which is uprooted washed and placed in a beaker which contains a stain called eosin solution that is a dye which is pink in color and the roots should be completely submerged in the solution now the setup is kept aside for 3 to 4 hours and at the end of this period the plant is taken out of the solution and washed in the normal water or in the tap water now a transverse section of the root stem and the leaf is made and examined under a microscope the xylem vessel will appear distinct from the rest of the parts because they will be stained red by the dye than rest of the parts now let us have the third experiment which is again conducted uh, to show that water is also absorbed by the xylem so for this experiment we need to take two leafy shoots such as those of a balsam plant which have been cut under water to prevent any air bubbles getting inside and we have to keep this necessity that 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 plant is not exposed to air and it is directly uh, soon after the cutting it is immersed in the test tube containing water now remove 3 cm of outer ring which is called as the phloem of the stem in one of them which is shown in the bigger a now keep the central part intact and this particular experiment is called as the ringing experiment which is also called as girdling and the other beaker B remove an equal length of the central part called as the xylem after incising the stem for full thickness and keeping the peripheral part intact. Now the shoots are then fixed to stands and are allowed to remain for about two and half hours or two days with their lower ends immersed in water. It will be found that the leaves in the first twig remain turgid and stand out almost normally. But those which is the second twig will get wilted and droop down very soon and this experiment proves that water is conducted upwards in a plant through the deeper part called as the xylem now the next experiment is to show that food from the leaves is conducted down throughout the through the phloem of the stem for this cut a ring around the stem of a healthy potted plant or around a thin twig of guava or any other tree now deep enough so that it can penetrate the phloem and the cambium but not the xylem this too is again called as the girdling experiment it will be seen that sap starts oozing out from the farthest cut margin of the stem showing thereby the sap of the peripheral part flowing which is flowing in a downward direction after some weeks it will be observed that the part of the stem above the ring has grown in diameter and the stem below the girdle has stopped growing and may even die when the stored organic contents of the lower part are exhausted the fresh healthy condition of the leaves in this experiment 
also proves that the leaves continue to get a supply of water through the deeper located xylem for herbaceous plants now second part is our capillarity which means diameter is very narrow and in this the xylem vessels causes the water from the lower level to rise in and to fill up the vacuum created by the loss of water due to transpiration from the leaves narrower the diameter of the tube greater will be the height of the water rising in it and this exerts a force called as the capillary force next is a transpiration pull as the water is lost from the leaf surface by transpiration more water molecules are pulled up due to the tendency of water molecules to remain cohesive or joined and thus to produce a continuous column of water through the stem so fourth one is our adhesion it causes the water to stick to the surface of cells thus drawing more water molecules from below when the leaf cells lose water during the transpiration and this pulling force or the suction force provided by the leaves is specially important in tall trees such as pines and they do not have enough root pressure that's why this adhesion force is more important to take the water from lower level to the great height next is our downward movement of sap this is relatively very small, uh, simple and the food manufactured in the leaf is dissolved in the water and it flows down mainly on the account of force of gravity so it's not so clumsy like the ascent of sap thank you and uh, this is uh, all about the whole chapter of our absorption by roots so this part we have conducted three sessions i think you all are clear if not you can be free to ask any doubts whenever you like but before that i want you everyone to write the review questions which consists of multiple choice very short answers short answers long answers as well as structured type answers so all this should be there in your notebooks once the school is reopened we'll go through those answers thank you and have a nice day